Welcome to this episode of YouTube. Apologize for the delay that we've had, but as you can imagine, we have a lot of things going on here, especially finishing the building, getting ready for pups. We don't have a pup update right now, but we expect to probably have some information within the next week. So again, we'll uh, let you know when we get them here and they are officially on site. Uh, but at this time, we are seeing a little bit return to colder weather, so we've got a little bit of dominance. We are probably getting a little bit more activity out of the exhibit pack than out of Grizzer. Grizzer again is back in the pack holding area so he's pretty relaxed and pretty calm. The exhibit pack's um, pretty active and certainly there's a lot of things going on. We're going to be meeting with contractors to do the rock work around the pump housing. We're going to uh, connect with a tree person to be able to bring in some more shade trees and to get the front of the exhibit a little bit conducive for the wolves to help cool themselves so there's a lot of contractors a lot of times when the exhibit pack is held off and has to go into the pack holding area uh, for periods of time while contractors come and go so uh, when Grizzer dealt with all the contractors in this winter the exhibit pack was pretty calm now reverse that everybody's pretty much done on the building and Grizzer's pretty calm in the pack holding area but the exhibit pack is having a lot of time where they're drawn off and obviously when you're drawn off and you're a wolf that's a change to your environment and new sights, new smells and things that are going on in the pack make primarily an um, Aiden anxious. Luna um, is a little bit more anxious. It's interesting, Bolts just kind of lies down and waits and Denali usually tries to dig up all of Grizzard's caches in the pack holding area so that's kind of the dynamic so it's usually Aiden who's the most stressful then when they come back out they redirect and that's what you're seeing here is just a little bit of dominance towards Denali and Denali kind of takes it in stride and certainly he's not showing any t tuck tail or real fear avoidance issues um, he does a little bit when Luna um, is on him but with Aiden that's a brother relationship and they're pretty used to that relationship so Aiden's doing what's called a squash behavior just sitting on top of Denali and uh, gonna lay on Denali and like I said that's a relationship that's born with genetics I mean these two are brothers and they have been together their entire life and that's something that we see and one of the interesting things when we go to pick pups is that we do favor genetic uh, litter mates um, brothers you know, brother, sister, uh, then we do mixing litters, and that's one thing that we've learned over the years. And so one thing people need to understand about pup selection is that there's a lot that's involved in it, looking at not only the facility but the veterinary records and then looking at what's been whelped and then trying to come up with the best scenario. So um, this isn't that much of a delay. If you go back to some of our later wolves, Shadow Malik were born, May 8th, Grizzer was born May 5th, Nisa was born May 12th, and so we're kind of in the right time frame um, for pup birth, so I know a lot of people are anxious to hear about the pups, and probably because Luna and Bolts were born in March, and certainly um, that was much earlier than we typically see, so we're not um, concerned with um, this timing of pups coming in. We um, know, as, especially now that we're getting, again, below freezing weather in the mornings, uh, we're um, happy to have a little bit more time to for the weather to moderate uh, before the pups come on site so we will announce uh, again the uh, arrival of the pups and we'll be talking about webcams here in the near future so like I said the, the activity continues uh, certainly wolves are always showing us the social nature of the pack behavior Luna especially um, liking to toss hides and um, engage in some what appears to be just kind of um, fun social behavior. Luna and Bolt have a little bit of dominance between them that is probably triggered by the fact that they were raised together and yet Luna is a dominant female and kind of is more status than Bolt's and as you saw earlier Bolt's is still pretty timid and you see him hiding behind the rocks and you know overall kind of watching from afar. That's going to obviously change when pups are, um, enter the enclosure because uh, for the first actually year the pups will be you know kind of get the opportunity to rule the pack but as they reach a year of age they'll fall into a rank order especially the fact that uh, we're anticipating male pups uh, bolts is going to obviously gain some status so luna um, will not um, change in status because she's the only female and we're not at this time getting another female so that's uh, where we're at with the wolves and we thought we'd share a little bit of the 
exhibit and progress we've made within the building. So we do still have our office, our wolf care office, where we see uh, the surveillance video, um, the video computer that we use for pr producing YouTubes and things. And from that office, we can see right out into the pack holding area. And so we have a lot of things that go on here. And this is obviously where the wolf care staff congregate a lot of memories, a lot of uh, previous wolves, Kiana, Anissa, Shadow, Malik. And then we come into the lounge area. And one thing about the lounge area is this is where we want people that are working with pups to be able to watch DVDs, to be able to look at trainings and things. Um, thanks to Dana, we have a washer and dryer and we have a fridge for human food uh, and a microwave for human food. That's really important around here that you know what is uh, human and what is wolf. We have air conditioning, temperature controlled uh, air conditioning. Then we go into the wolf care uh, center, which is where the pups will be. And this is a enclosure that was built with adult wolves in mind, meaning it's got the capability of, of keeping adult wolves as well as pups. It has a guillotine door that goes out into a vestibule that's right in Grizzer's uh, pack holding area. And then you can see from the back side of the pack holding area, we redid the roof kennel, um, giving uh, a, a one weatherproof connection from the pack holding area kennel into the vestibule, which goes into the building. So Grizzer has his space back where he can see out into the wolf yard. He's gonna lose that when the pups come because the pups will be able to access this area and we'll actually have a webcam in this pack holding area. That's the outside area that the pups will be. So Grizzer will be maintaining um, in the back east side habitat. Uh, he's not going to have interactions with the pups uh, primarily because when we do work with pups and they're being adopted by the exhibit pack, um, it is a little bit concerning if the exhibit pack perceive that the pups kind of belong to Grizzer. So we're going to be very conscientious about that. Um, the, grizz, the pups will have direct face-to-face -face contact through a protected hardware cloth with the exhibit pack, and that's who we want them to bond with. Um, we don't, we wouldn't bond new pups with retirees because obviously we want the pups to share their lives uh, with the future pack members, and that's who they're going to be joining. So, like I said, Grizzer's got a little bit of time left in the pack holding area. Well, pups will not be out in this outside enclosure until probably the weather warms. I would suspect uh, towards the end of May into early June before they spend time outside. They need to develop guard hairs. They're born with, with very soft undercoat, which you're seeing here on Grizzer's leg. That's the undercoat that the adults shed. That's all that pups have right now. They don't have the long guard hairs that protect them. So that's something that we want to be able to do. So one thing we did have was a vet check here, and I want to explain a little bit of this behavior. Um, in 2008, we had some negative conditioning during Grizzer's vet check, uh, where the veterinarian was checking him, and Grizzer got a little startled and associated negativity with our vet. He still holds that today. So this is a bark threat code, and this is a threat display. So Grizzer has some anxiety and aggression towards the veterinarian. So uh, it is something that like I said, air conditioning is, in, is very critical for us and making sure that the wolves don't have any, a negative experience. So we talk about that with pups. And this is not a, 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 a fearful thing for Grizzer. This is a, a dominance and this is an aggressive thing. You can see him doing a raised leg urination, very perked up um, to see our vet and uh, very happy to see our vet go. So obviously that's a little concerning. Um, we're talking about um, finding some other veterinary alternatives. We have two or three different vets here, so obviously we can't have the vet check for the pups. Um, with this kind of strife um, with Grizzer, the pups are going to associate negativity, so we got to figure that out, and this is a problem we're going to have until Grizzer goes. Um, this, is a, um, this is something that's not going to be solved um, through any kind of uh, behavioral modifications. So. Anyways, so that's kind of it um, for this week. I apologize for the big delay, but it's been uh, a lot of, of work here. But Grizzer is, is relaxed. He's, we're done with construction, and he is waiting for pups. Um, so uh, we will probably post um, something as soon as we find out that they are safe and sound at our facility. So thanks for watching.